they start all over again. A round trip of anything from four to ten weeks, consisting simply of work, sleep and more work. Twelve hours on, six hours off, day and night, seven days a week. There are no Sundays. And in conditions that would frighten the life out of any weekend yachtsman. In contrast to the violence of an Atlantic storm, the intricate details and beauty of pack ice drifting in the sunlight go unnoticed. Little temporary worlds of blue and green grottoes with the sea sloshing in and out come close and vanish astern, pushed aside, ignored. Meanwhile, flying spray and freezing rain cling to the rigging. In a combination of certain freak conditions, the sheer weight of ice can turn the whole ship upside down, make it turn turtle. Slush ice is different. Tiny hexagonal patterns form on the surface, matting down the waves and making sounds go dead. The whole atmosphere is affected. Other ships appear stranded, as if marooned on a gently moving sandbank. And there are other ships, a whole fleet of them. In one corner of an empty ocean, suddenly it's Oxford Street on a shopping day. Okay, sit Russians, Poles, East Germans, West Germans, Norwegians, Portuguese and French, a miniature United Nations. In fact, the British are comparative new boys on these Labrador grounds. Sí, sí, sí. For the captain, this is his second home. These are his friends. They chatter endlessly on the radio, often far into the night. He knows them well, their private lives and all their personal feelings, and yet, he will hardly ever meet one of them face to face. He's learning German so that he can talk to some of them in their own language. He feels guilty that they speak to him in English. A particular friend, the huge net is slipped quietly over the stern, followed by the heavy bobbins that will hold it firmly on the bottom. The air-filled head cans will lift the upper jaws of the trawl and hold it open. Finally, the trawl doors or otter boards, designed to slip through the water at an angle to hold the whole contraption balanced and gaping like some giant butterfly net, 200 fathoms below the surface of the ocean and a full mile behind the ship that's towing. Each towing cable has to withstand a load of up to 15 tons apiece. The winches which hold them, though they don't look it, are delicate pieces of equipment. The winchman is a man with quick reflexes. If he's not, he'll snap the cable. If you want to insult him, you tell him he's got the reactions of a banana. The unseen net is dragged along the ocean floor for approximately two hours. Fish do not...
is always a supreme moment in a skipper's life when a really large haul comes aboard. Sometimes he will plaster them with kisses in his excitement. tons of cod. In fact, in this one hall, there's almost enough fish to feed a hundred thousand people at a city. livers are kept on one side. How many small boys ask themselves where their cod liver oil comes from? Special freezing units accept the fresh cod and freeze it into solid blocks within four hours. When it comes out, the fish is as hard as iron and will keep fresh, if necessary, for two years. The ship can stay at the fishing grounds until the hold is completely full. It may take four weeks, it may take ten. It's only when the last block goes in that the ship can head happily for home. The trawler, however modern, needs a crew to handle it. The crew relies...